<clears throat> yes, Lord. Just waiting for some viewers to come on. We praise God today. We give Him all the glory, all the thanks. Just a little time of worship. God is good. Yes, you. God is faithful. Amen. He remains faithful even when we're not faithful. And I just hmm, give him all the glory, all the honor in this time. So for those live and for those who will catch the rebroadcast, I'm asking you to please share, share, share. Share to your platforms, your timeline, your groups, um, so that others can be encouraged in this time. I'm going to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you thanks. Abba Father, we worship your holy name. We say that you are the Lord God Almighty the Creator, the Elohim, Father, the Builder and Maker of this universe. We glorify thy holy name, Father. And as I am here before your people, Father God, speak through me, Lord God Almighty, as I humble myself as a vessel of honor unto you, Father God. I just give you thanks that many who will come on this live or catch the rebroadcast father god that they will find a sense of hope in this time that the world is going through father god i bless your holy name and i thank you in the name of your son jesus christ the anointed one in jesus his name and the only name i pray amen we bless God. We bless God. I just, as you can see by the title, it says Jehovah, Isaiah. Our Jehovah, He's our true helper. And as, of course, everyone is going through this time um, worldwide. <laughs> For us believers, the true believers of God, the children of the Most High, we know exactly what is going on, what is about to take place, what is taking place. The Messiah has told us, so it shouldn't be anything that's new to our ear, to our eyes. You know, we are told that there is a time coming upon this land that has never been and yet will never be again so as we believe and trust and rely in the Lord Jesus Christ in this time we shall we should have no fear we should have no fear we should trust in the Lord God Almighty the one who reigns supreme over all things the author and finisher of our faith, the creator of our life, we should leave everything resting in his bosom. As a daughter to a father, you know, like when we're young children to our earthly father, 
we really do not um we have a sense of trust that we have in our father we have a sense of believing that everything is going to be okay relying on him you know because as children as young children we really we don't take up the thoughts of burden and we have nothing really to worry about as children you know we just play have fun we have no care in the world because everything is rely was left to rely on our heavenly parents <clears throat> excuse me everything is left um relying on our heavenly parents so in this situation as well everything we must trust god not learn to trust god but we should be at that point now where we are trusting god knowing that all will be well knowing that this is part of what was prefaced in scripture prophesied precursor of the things to come and uh, yesterday I had a scripture and then it, it's here today again that same scripture uh, Psalm 46 and it reads the presence of God in calamity is God still in control he is God remains supreme he remains in control all the time he's an omniscient omnipresent omnipotent God he reigns supreme there's nothing that never happens without the okay of God God lets things happen for his glory but we must know that the judgment of God is here on the land the judgment of God is here among us and you know as sisters in Christ we're here to encourage uplift you know um, elevate one another as well as educate each other rub minds together not just for you know um, our earthly stance here but also for our life in eternity educate one another um, as we walk along the Christian journey encourage each other to keep pushing to keep going forward to hold on even in these dark times so I just want to read um, Psalm 46 and it reads God is our refuge God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble amen Hmm. Therefore, I will not. Therefore, will not we fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. We praise God. What does that say? What does that really truly mean? God is our refuge. It says God is our refuge and strength. Right? He's a mighty, he's a mighty God. He's our refuge. There's a scripture as well that says, He's our refuge. The righteous run in and they are saved. Right? So God is our refuge. He's mighty. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. It says, therefore, I will not fear. 
or we will not fear. Right? Though the earth should change, and though the mountains shall be shaken into the midst of the sea. As we see earthquakes happening, as I was reading, give me a second, as I was reading a few days ago about asteroids or meteorites coming close to the earth, I just remembered in the book of Revelation where it speaks of wormwood. You know, um, It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the people of God to wake up. It's time for women in the kingdom to arise. Because we are in some serious times. We are in some serious times. Even today I was here and I was just worshiping God. I was just worshiping God and just thanking him for his protection because some of us still go to work some of us do business from home as well um, you know is this a time for fear to rule your life as a believer as a child of God I won't even say as a Christian but as a believer a born-again believer as a child of the Most High God, is this the, is this the time for you, for for us to cower, cowardly, you know, um, stay away from the things of God? Even when I heard that there were some church closures, I was saying to myself, really in this time. In this time, I understand that there are um, legalities to it. You know, you shouldn't worship more than 50 in, in, a, in a service. I understand all of that. But at the same time, it's not just that alone. Fear has crept in as well. Fear has crept in as well. Fear has crept in as well. And are we who are to be the followers of Jesus Christ going to let the enemy throw fear at us in this time? Because people of God, sisters of the kingdom, I'm going to let you know this is pre a precursor. This is nothing compared to what's coming. This is nothing compared to what's coming. So, are we going to back down now? Are we going to be, like, take on that fear and, like, have the enemy, you know, make us feel cowardly and not be encouraged to fight the good fight of faith? This is just a, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say practice, because that seems like, you know, but um, this is, it, this is an audition for the, 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 the bigger things that are ahead. The bigger things that are ahead, you know, um, Jesus told us. In the book of Matthew, let me get it. Let me read Matthew 24. All the signs. Matthew 24. All the signs are there. Everything that um, 
part of everything that will be coming up on the line. And it says, I mean, right from the get go, you know, the disciples asked Jesus, like, when can we tell if you're coming? And Jesus went in to say, Let me start at let me uh, let me start at, uh, verse four of um, Matthew twenty four. So Jesus answered them, "Be careful that no one misleads you. So be careful that no one deceives you into um, into leading you into error, right?" And then he goes on to say, this wasn't really the scripture um, chosen, but I will flip back and forth. He goes on to say in verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hmm. Right? Then he went on to say, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are we not hearing that now? Are we not hearing there's many wars in different countries? There's even a possible... Is it possible? I shouldn't say possible, but there's talks of World War III, which is something that will happen rumors of war right the lord said you will hear you shall hear of wars so wars are happening and you shall hear rumors of wars what does you shall hear rumors of wars that means of wars going to happen see that ye are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet verse 7 for millions shall sorry for nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famine so we've been seeing nations rising up against nations countries against countries right and uh, kingdom against kingdom We've been seeing all of that happen. We've been seeing all of that happen. Then Jesus goes on to say, to say, and there shall be famines. Right? People are not able to have food, get food, buy food. And pestilences. What's pestilences? Sickness, illness, disease, all of these things. Um, the um, locusts that were all over Kenya and, and uh, in um, Dubai, not Dubai, in uh, Mecca. All of the, all of those things are showing us these are the signs of the times that we are living in. And earthquakes we just had an earthquake the other day um, in the States you know always hearing of earthquakes the vol volcanic volcanic eruption of vol volcano eruptions <laughs> um, you know and um, like earthquakes all over the place and, and and the Bible says even in diverse places right so diverse places, like place after place, we'll be hearing these these earthquakes happening. We bless the name of Jesus. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So these things are precursors. These things are things that have started and you know, little by little, 
gradually by gradually it goes more and more gets more intense more intense then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted so now Jesus is speaking to the children of God now they shall then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake so right there we know living for Christ is not uh, a day in the park living for Christ is, is a serious thing that you know at this time we are going to really see the goats and uh, the, the goats who, the, who are the goats and who are the sheep at this time we're going to see who are the true believers in Christ Jesus who are the true followers in Christ because Jesus said you know the wheat and the tears shall grow together until the day of harvest right so there's a testing time which has started because as you, as you can see with um, a, a, a lot of different views on, on things in the world Christians are actually being hated upon they're actually being bullied and they're actually being hated upon they're actually being um, separated I, I believe uh, I, will, I was even uh, reading um, just a little excerpt it wasn't really like I didn't really read the whole thing but there was a little excerpt of a politician in America whereby someone was saying that him believing in God was a mental issue that he had So we are being, um, we are being like singled out amongst the the other, um, I won't say religion, but amongst the other people, because living for Christ is not a, a, a religion, right? It's a relationship between you and the Father through His Son Jesus Christ. So. Um, right so it says that you'll be killed persecuted and you shall be hated by all nations not just some by everybody because a time is coming um you can you can see it going on now christians are going to be hated by everybody gonna be hated by everyone um just for the name of jesus just for proclaiming our love and our relationship with Jesus Christ verse 10 and then shall many be offended which we can see that happening now many have been offended like when we speak righteousness many are being offended when we speak holiness many are being offended saying that we don't love and we and we walk in love uh, born again believers walk in the love the agape love of Jesus Christ and now we are we are told that we don't love because when we speak truth and righteousness the spirit the, 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 the conviction comes upon that individual so now they're offended now they're offended And shall betray huh? and shall betray one another and shall hate one another right so we are um, people are going to be offended so repelled from us and then um, How can I explain this? Like there's many that will be that that will fall the, the, the falling away, the great falling away, right? And be done like the falling away from Christendom. 
And then what happens? Then you end up betraying your brother or your sister in Christ. Um, like, with hatred. Then verses 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, which we are seeing all over social media. Um, false prophecies and, you know, them asking for money. And they can't prophesy without you giving money. Um, not just all on, on Facebook, but also in some churches. Um, because the truth of the matter is that not everyone who says Lord, Lord is going to enter into the kingdom of God, right? Some take this as a business, not a, a, a relationship with Christ. And because iniquity shall abound and the love of many will wax cold. Praise God. Right? And the love, the, the, the great love that they once had, they no longer have. It, it grows cold, right? Because of the lawlessness and the iniquity that now rules within inside of them. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall he be saved. But he who endures till the end, he will be the one that will be saved. Sorry, my, my apologies. My daughter's laughing in the background with her friend. Um, so the one who sticks into this, the uh, sticks on this journey in this race till the end what is the end there's a time coming that we are going to have to prove ourselves there's a time coming that we're going to have to prove ourselves this journey to christendom this journey to eternity is not an easy one our father in heaven told us that we will have to endure trials and tribulations and a lot of Christians think it's just like the storms of life that we're going through. That's all we have to go through. But there's a testing time coming where Christians will be persecuted. Many are being persecuted worldwide right now. And a lot of us think that here in Canada, oh, it's not coming here. Right? We're always looking at the third world countries and the... The, the, the believers, Christians in the third world country, those things only happen there. Well, today we have a wake up call. We see what's going around us now with this virus. Because many people I've come across in the last few weeks said to me, I never thought this would ever happen in my lifetime. Or I never thought this would happen at home where we are in Canada. And then many that I've come across know exactly that is script. All of this that we're going through is scriptural. Is 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 end of days, is the Bible prophecy. And um, so these are some of the things that we're seeing now. I didn't want to really go into it into great details because this was in the chapter that um that had come to me but as we are here you know let me just wrap up a little um but he who endures to the end that same one he shall be saved and this gospel in verse 14 says this gospel the good news of jesus christ the love of God, the Father, Abba Father, through His Son. The, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the name and all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Amen. I just want to put a pause there and say now is the time 
to evangelize now is the time to go to God's people to, to go out to to his creation you as God's people go out to creation and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ you know this is modern day now we have like television we have the internet you know um, we still have missionaries going um, bringing the good news you uh, can be a, a vessel of you know be used by God like you can you can teach preach say the, the, the gospel to a next-door neighbor you know to a friend especially in this time a lot of people are looking for hope now you know I can understand yes there was people looking for hope before you know but now we're all in, in, in this one big boat together and people are looking for answers and I tell you Jesus is the only answer He's the only answer so go out like you know speak to somebody on the road about Jesus yes there's this social distancing um, and honestly for me my Lord and Savior told me not to fear my Lord and Savior said that he will be with me and now I'll bring it back to Psalms 46 um, I'm going to read it from the NIV. Psalms 46. I will read. He says, God is our refuge and strength. And an ever-present help in trouble. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's the one that will say, my daughter, go out there and evangelize. Go out there and preach the good news. Go out there and gain souls for the kingdom. Because I'm telling you, at this time, Satan is using fear amongst even the people of God. So go out there. He says that he's your refuge. He says that he's your strength. He's your ever-present help in the time of trouble is this trouble this is trouble but remember God his judgment is here many have gone out to bring the good news and many have decided not to they have refused to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus today. And what did he say? In verse 2, therefore, we will not fear. So we are not to fear. We are not to be buying up all this toilet paper, buying up all this sanitizer. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use sanitizer um, but at the rate we see everything going people buying up all this sanitizer people buying up all this food people I'm not saying you shouldn't prepare that's a good thing prepare but all of this is being done in fear wearing masks as a child of God honestly my take on that one is a no-no because that is fear now you're not believing the promises of God, of, of, of God you're not believing that he's going to take care of you you're not believing you know he says that he's your refuge and he's your, he's your strength now you're starting to believe that you have no covering Unless you know you have no covering, that's a different story altogether. But if you know you have a covering in Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus, 
if you know that you and your family are walking in righteousness and holiness if you know within yourself that you know that you know that you know that you're a true born-again believer of Jesus Christ you should have nothing to fear at this time but take this opportunity draw closer to God draw closer to God even if your relationship with him is rocky and when I mean rocky I mean like you haven't been reading your word you haven't been praying on a regular take this opportunity to to to, to, to draw closer to God because usually when that happens it's us that move away from the father and he goes on to say verse 2 again therefore we will not fear though the earth give way amen and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea the blessed name of Jesus though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging right we spoke about some earthquakes before in um the book of Matthew 24 so all when all of that's happening all of when we see the signs of earthquake all when we see the signs of nations rising up against nations all when we see when kingdoms are rising up against kingdom all the things that I just read all when we hear about wars and rumors of war all when we hear about what Matthew 24 says we still Verses 4 of Psalms 46 says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Glory. Glory to God. God is within her. She will not fail. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. God is within her. What does that mean? God is within his people. Within the body of Christ. Which is the church of God. Not the four walls. But the body of Christ. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar what we just read in Matthew 24 glory to God nations are in uproar kingdoms fall he lifts his voice he lifts his voice hmm. the earth melts the Lord Almighty is with us amen the Lord Almighty is with us and God of Jacob is our fortress amen if you know anything about a fortress a fortress is a hiding place it's refuge hallelujah it's refuge and he promises to be our refuge. I'm just flipping back into this. I've got three versions in front of me. Um, I wanted to read it from another version. And says therefore will not we therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled through the mountain shall 
through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof Selah there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High Amen God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her and that right early and that right early so God is in the midst of her he's in the midst of his people and she shall not be moved God will help her right right early and like right early dawn in the morning God shall help her you see and it goes to say the nations raged the kingdoms tottered my God and were moved he uttered his voice and the earth melted the Lord of hosts he is Jehovah Sabaoth the Lord of hosts right is with us hallelujah the God of Jacob is our refuge the Lord of hosts the Lord of God's of, of the heavenly armies God moves with his people and you know as a song that I'm listening to I've been listening to it all day even though I don't see that you're working even though I don't feel that you're working the fact remains God is always working he never stops so in all of life's calamity in all of life's ups and downs in all of this virus in all of this um, lawlessness and all of this dark time evilness that that's happening right now God is in control he remains in control and I just I just wanted to come on here and say that today that you know what we must not walk in fear we must not walk in fear let us trust God let us trust God. I, I can't even finish reading the whole scripture. But I encourage you to read um, Matthew 24. That wasn't really one of the scriptures. But God led me to read that scripture here on, online. So um, I encourage you to read Matthew 24 and Psalm 46. Psalms 46. And if you're not at that place where your your walk is is strong with the Lord or and, and and God sent all the plagues and the pestilence upon the land, the waters turned into blood. There was locusts. Waters were turning into blood those days too, as we see now in, in places like Jamaica and um I forget the place in Africa. I'm not sure if it's Kenya, but we've been seeing that going on you know and because pharaoh was so stubborn to the point where god gave him many warnings just like some of what's going on today in our nations and he refused and he refused and he refused So when he went and he killed, um, at the time when he killed all the, fir the um, when the death angel would pass over, sorry, when the death angel would pass over, he, he said to them, he gave strict instructions that what they're making shouldn't have yeast in it, whatever they were making to eat. So that was like the first Passover whatever they were making as bread it shouldn't have any yeast it shouldn't have any leaven inside right and that they should put 
the blood of the lamb on, on their doorpost. That when the death angel saw it, the death angel bringing all the plagues on all of um, the pestilence and the darkness moving through the land of Egypt. When he saw the blood on the, port, the doorpost, that he will pass them by. Because by that, he knew that, that those were God's chosen people. So he would pass them by. So I'm encouraging you today. That if you don't know Jesus, get to know him before it's too late. Because as I said, tomorrow's not promised. Our next minute is not promised. And in this world, only Jesus Christ is the only hope for mankind. Because what we're seeing now is a precursor. There's a worse. There's a there's a there's a there's more things coming. And I'm telling you, you can only be covered under the wings of the Almighty to take you through. So I'm bidding you all a blessed evening. Please read Psalms 46 and Matthew 24. Um, and just pray, ask God to reveal things to you. Ask God to draw you closer to him. I wasn't planning on staying here that long. I do have to go out. Um, so until the next video, I wanted to actually mention some things, but I'm going to leave that for um another video so um I'm, I'm bidding you all a blessed evening um do not fear walk in your faith now is the time we need to step out bold in our faith